Hi everyone, I'm standing on a cliff edge in a place called Zena in Cornwall. Welcome to today's English Stars review lesson. Today in our English Stars class, we visited this lovely location. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name's Amy. I'm a master's level qualified teacher teaching live online lessons and courses. Starting the lesson was a sentence doctor activity. The children had to diagnose the problem with this sentence, just like a doctor would diagnose, and then cure the sentence. We had lots of lovely extensions to this sentence and lots of interesting adjectives that were dropped in there as well. Great work, guys. The story we're focusing on in English Stars Group is Michael Morpurgo's The Giant Necklace. This story is set in a place called Zena in Cornwall. Michael Mompurgo often sets his books around the coastline of Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly as well. So we were able to find where Cornwall is on the map. After a little bit of geography, we decided we were going to focus in on this picture and really, really describe it in great detail. So what I did was I gave the English stars a guided daydream. So they imagined that they were a bird a gull or a seagull or kitty wake or something and they were zooming around the coastline thinking about what they could see thinking about what they could hear thinking about how it felt to be there our conversation focused in on a few things we talked about the beach perhaps not being called a beach but maybe being called a cove or a bay and we also focused in on the type of vegetation we can see behind here. So we talked about this perhaps being heather and we talked about the word bracken and where bracken grows in the UK. Another focus was this winding path here that comes all the way down from the top down to the, down to the coast, perhaps into this cove as well. Then it was time for a little review of something we looked at last week, what makes a good reader? And I was really impressed that some of the children were able to remember the kinds of things that good readers do. So they question, predict, infer, connect, and they feel. And this is something that perhaps you start to do as a really good reader um, subconsciously, so you don't realize you're doing it. It's just something that kind of naturally happens as you go through the reading process. But I think at first, it's important that this is taught so children know what to be aware of when they're reading. I really enjoyed the next part of the lesson. Somebody volunteered to read this paragraph. And as they read it, and um, we were thinking about what words could possibly go into the missing ones here. Um, we had some really lovely predictions. And actually, some people guessed the exact words, which was fabulous. Next, we talked about the atmosphere of a couple of pictures, and we also later talked about the atmosphere in the text. We looked at this word and we talked about what we thought it means, and we came up with some words to describe the atmosphere. Next, we read the next part of the text, and we focused on some retrieval questions and some vocabulary questions as well. After this lovely illustration, there appeared to be a kind of change in the atmosphere of the text. And we lingered around this illustration for a little while. And we talked about what is happening here and any predictions for the next part. The group were very thoughtful and very insightful using their skills that they know good readers do. So posing questions, inferring meaning, connecting with the text, and also predicting what they think is going to happen next. This is a real changing point in the story, and we read on a little bit further afterwards. Today, there was a huge amount of interesting, powerful, and perhaps new vocabulary to some of the members in the group. So we played a vocabulary activity. I chose some words that had been significant either in the text or as a suggestion from one of the children. And we looked at those words and we tried to memorize them just as a little game. And then when the children looked away, I would take one of the words away and they had to guess which word had gone. It was a lovely lesson with great contributions from everyone. One of the members of our English Stars group had been so inspired by the necklace, the giant's necklace made of cowrie shells. She had sourced some cowrie shells and had a go of making her own necklace. She showed it in the lesson, which was lovely. And this is a picture of it here. How amazing. Great work. 
If you would like to join a lovely group of learners in an online English group, please check out my link in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye.